I actually am a massive believer that sometimes we need to actually ban foods. When we want to get healthy, when we want to drop fat, when we want to feel good, sometimes we actually need to ban foods. Should we have to? No, not necessarily. But when certain people have trigger foods, have foods that they start eating and they have to eat the rest of it. It's not as simple as just saying only have a spoonful. It's not as simple as just saying only have one portion in the house. Because believe me, from my personal history, if you only have one portion in the house, we're adults. We go and get some more if we want it. Only having a snack sized Cadbury's bar in the house. No, we will go and get a whole bar from the corner shop. We will go and pick up a full bar from the supermarket. If you only have a small amount of peanut butter, we will go to the store and grab a kilo. Same with ice cream, same with crisps, same with all this other stuff. Here's the deal. If somebody is not able to do these little things, then you, as a coach, just like myself, should be looking to ban that food. Is it the actual end point there? No. A lot of coaches don't look deep into the psychological aspect. Don't look as to why people are falling off, why people are using this food, it's a trigger. What emotion is it covering up? What thing deep inside of your client, inside of you, what is happening when you have that food? Why do you overeat that food? And that is key to making sure that, yes, you may have banned this food now, but we want to eventually get that food back in there to a point where you can have it and not have that emotional hang up. Actually be able to have a little bit of ice cream, be able to have one biscuit, one cookie, one mouthful of peanut butter and not have the whole jar going nuts, completely falling off your diet and then have the guilt afterwards. When something works for you, when something is right for you, you don't need to ban foods. But we have to get to that position first. Believe me, I've had to ban multiple foods over the years. And then I've had to dive in so deep. And it can be scary. It can be so scary if you don't have the right person there to talk you through why you are having these things. What is your emotional need to having this chocolate, to having this candy, to having this alcohol? Why? What are you covering up? This is where we need to make sure we take it step by step to get you successfully from A to B where you are now to where you want to be, in a healthy way. Is Bannon Foods going to be healthy overall? No. Is Bannon Foods going to be needed for some people? Yes. When people say you need to eat intuitively and you don't need to ban foods, that's cool for them. Maybe they haven't looked into the psychology of actually falling off and fucking up every once in a while and feeling pretty bad of it because you've just eaten a whole tub of peanut butter. Maybe they haven't looked into it because you've fallen off, you're fucked up because you've just eaten three tubs of Ben and Jerry's. All these things need to be taken into account. If you've found this has been a problem in the past, get in touch. Let's just talk it through. Revitalizationblueprint.com forward slash let's talk. I look forward to speaking to you soon.